After breaking his leg in college, he could have gave up. After being told his height and size was too small, he could have gave up. But he didn't. He bet on himself, and he didn't take no for an answer. At every roadblock, he transpired and pulled through. It ain't about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about the size of the fight in the dog. And this dog's got a lot of fight in him. Brian was born and raised in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I, don't know, I grew up in a good neighborhood. I played outside most of my life as a kid. Uh, I had a bunch of friends in the neighborhood. I, you know, I was involved in a whole bunch of sports, so I like playing football, basketball. Uh, I wanted to get into uh, soccer, but I never had the chance. So when you stopped playing football and focused on basketball, were you good at it? Like, were you the best player on the court, or were there any growing pains? No, definitely some growing pains. Um, I mean, I remember coming back to the house sometimes just uh, crying, bawling my eyes out because it was like, man, what else can I do? Because I felt like I wasn't being seen for the player that I was. Um, you know, a lot of coaches look off smaller guards and smaller players in basketball. Being looked off is kind of, it's kind of been my story. So my dad knew that I was going to have to work harder than, you know, most of my competition. So he put me in a lot of like uh, areas that I would succeed. So he took me to, you know, like speed trainers. Uh, he trained me a lot. Although Brian's dad was a good trainer, he felt like if Brian wanted to elevate his game, that he needed to go to a real trainer, and this would change Brian's basketball career forever. Yeah, uh, trainer Jimmy Hayes uh, out of Greensboro, North Carolina. He is probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. He believed in me more than I believed in myself, and I think that was really needed. I worked out with that trainer all summer. I ended up coming back uh, freshman year, and I ended up playing above everybody that uh, had started in front of me. Or his brand is uh, Jam Run 22, uh, which stands for Run With Division. So Jam Run 22 is based on a Bible verse, uh, Habakkuk 2 and 2, which uh, says write it on the tablet and make it plain. Um, a lot of his stuff growing up was telling, was him telling me to make a vision sheet. And I would go home and write on these vision sheets what I felt like would be the most complete game. So I would write my total number of points, assists, rebounds, steals, whatever I felt like would be the most complete game for me as a player. During Brian's high school career, he trained with trainer Jimmy Hayes. Although Brian elevated his game with Hayes, his 5'8", 130-pound frame limited his recruiting opportunities. Despite having interest from a few Division I colleges, none of them wanted to offer him a full ride. Uh, you know, nobody's really looking at me, so it was like, man, what else can I do to, to, to kind of get noticed? Um, so it was a feeling of neglect. But um, yeah, I got my last offer to play basketball. My last game of my senior year, uh, we went down to this tournament down in Myrtle Beach. Uh, just happened to play good in front of the right eyes. Um, and I ended up taking that only offer. That coach that recruited Brian ended up leaving that school, but took Brian with him to Young Harris College, a Division II school in Georgia. It was there an optimistic Brian thought he was about to bloom into the scene, but tragedy struck. I ended up, as soon as I committed, and I knew I was playing in ball in Georgia, like literally a month later, I ended up breaking my leg. But I, in, in reality, I think that breaking my leg was one of the best things that's, that's happened to me, um, basketball-wise, in my career. I was not ready to, to play in a college basketball game. Break my leg made it so that I had to lift weights every single day. We lifted every day, all the red shirts, every single day. Uh, I ended up gaining 20 pounds that freshman year. Uh, and I, I came back next year ready to go. Brian was able to bounce back from his leg injury and spent two years at Young Harris College. Although he enjoyed his time there, he felt like his last season should have panned out differently and he appreciated the coach for giving him a chance but recognized it was time for a new start. That's when Alva, Oklahoma came calling. In 2021, one of Brian's past coaches from a previous school recommended the guard to a coach here. Enlightened, they brought Brian on a visit and Northwestern Oklahoma State has been his home since. I think this is um, where God wanted me to be. It just felt like family when I first got here. Used to it out here, uh, very slow paced lifestyle. Um, everybody knows everybody, small community town. Um, and I've enjoyed my time here. Part of that family that Brian is talking about is senior guard Thomas Prado. The two met when Brian first came to Northwestern and have been inseparable since. Uh, I think we connected probably the first full year he was here. We used, we used to do everything together. So like go to football games, all that, so. 
I would consider him a brother. I mean, we've been here for three years, and so you can see that relationship every time when we go to layup lines, always dabbing each other up, so. Prado isn't the only part of Brian's Northwestern family. Although head basketball coach Robbie Harmon didn't recruit Brian, he's been a major part in expanding Brian's game and allowing him the freedom on the basketball court. Um, you know, I think I came in right away and gave him the green light. I don't know if he knew that, um, but I think, you know, right away it was, I wanted him to, to be shooting and taking a lot of shots, and if he thought it was a good shot, I thought it was good. Even if he thought it was a bad shot and he got a shot off, I thought it was a good shot. So I think he's always had the green light for me, but you know that he's got the capability of making any shot he wants to, and I kind of look at it as like a Steve Kerr, Steph, Steph Curry type thing where, and I want him to shoot as much as possible from whenever he, wherever he is, whenever he wants to. And I'm like, I always tell him, you didn't mean to hit that. And he goes, come on, bro. So you, you can see it on film every time. And I'm like, man, what a shot. But I know, you know, in the back of my mind that my team needs, you know, production from me. So um, especially if I'm, if I'm on, if it's a hot night, man, I'm pulling it from wherever. Bryant might be one of the best shooters in the country, but it didn't just happen overnight. Props again to my trainer, uh, Jimmy Hayes. That's where it all started. Um, and then the work that I put in. I mean, I go back to some days in high school, me and my dad sitting outside, catching, me catching 1,400 makes. I'm, I'm making 1,400 shots a day. If you really want something, if you really have some dreams and aspirations, they don't just sit back and, and the dreams don't come to you. Like you gotta go, you gotta, you gotta go out and get your dreams. You face so much adversity. You're an undersized guard, but you work your tail off. You don't get any offers in high school, and you finally get that offer, and you break your leg. I mean, how do you push through through all that? Because a lot of those times, man, you just feel like quitting. You go back and you pray and you pray and pray. And like you know, you know, God didn't just give you this talent, you know, for you to not use it. Obviously the talent is there, but what motivates you to not quit despite all the adversity that you go through? Like, what is your why? Uh, my motivation is making a career. You know, make, I want to get paid to play basketball. There's plenty of kids in America that are just like you. I mean, they got the talent, they have the motivation, they have the drive, but are just undersized and underappreciated, undervalued. What do you say to them? Yeah, keep working. Um, Stay true to your path, and I would say don't try to live somebody else's life, somebody else's dream, and make sure whatever you, that, you, that at the end of the day, you don't go home with no regrets. When you lay your head down, there's no regrets. You did everything possible to get better every day. Okay, lastly, Brian, you've had the doubters, people every step of the way hard at you, telling you that you can't do that, telling you just hang it up. And what do you think about all this? Like, despite all this adversity that you faced, do you think that you succeeded? I had plenty of doubters. Um, I had coaches that doubted me. My own head coaches um, that doubted me. Um, and I would say I've bet on myself 10 times out of 10, and I've been proving everybody wrong since. I think I succeeded, um, but my story's not done. Um, I still got a lot more to do. Still got. A, a lot of growing to do, a lot of learning to do. Um, so it's still steps that I need to take. But um, yeah, being here and being able to look back on how far I've, I've come is definitely a success for sure. Brian achieved first team all conference this year and plans to go overseas and play professional basketball. Reporting for NWO TV, I'm Ken Good luck and good night.